Hello and welcome to the next installment of the Daily Reflections. My name is Rusty and before I jump in with my thoughts, I thought I'd open us with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Come Holy Spirit. Dear Lord, we come to you now and invite you to speak to us, to reveal your heart, to reveal um, what it is that you want us to learn and know about you today. Thank you for um, this season, and would you draw close to us in this time. In Jesus' name, amen. So I'm actually going to be sharing from the book of John, one of the Gospels, and also from Revelation at the back of the Bible. So a few things uh, that um, might give you some things to think about. So the first passage is literally the last things that um, the Gospel of John captures uh, in Jesus's very last moments as he's on the cross and dying. Um, And I'll be picking up from John 19, starting in verse 28 and reading through verse 30. Uh, And it says, Jesus knew that his mission was now finished and to fulfill scripture, he said, I am thirsty. A jar of sour wine was sitting there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put it on a hyssop branch, and held it up to his lips. When Jesus had tasted it, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Now, I think it's interesting, first of all, that in the verse, first verse that I read, um, John gives some commentary and says, Jesus knew that his mission was now finished. Um And I suspect that all the witnesses, all those seeing what was going on, um, all those who had put all their hope and faith in this dramatic person, this, this leader that they had followed and put all of their trust in was now looking quite like he was failing. Um, And when he says it is finished, I'm guessing they're thinking likewise, our hopes, our dreams, everything is finished. It's, it's over, you know, now what do we do? Um, and so I suspect anyone hearing the words, it is finished, would have been filled with a lot of despair, a lot of grief. Um, now, a lot of commentaries and other thoughts, like John says here um, in this passage, uh, believe that what Jesus likely meant, we don't know, we, we weren't there to interview him, uh, but likely meant the purpose I came to earth, the reason I left the Trinity in heaven, the reason I became a human being, all of those things are now accomplished, at least as a an earthly human person, it's now finished. And so there likely was some hope Uh, in those words. It wasn't a defeatist. It wasn't a giving up in Jesus's um, words, but rather one of um, a sense of completion, um, finished in the sense of completed, not finished as in over and failed. Um, And as I was reflecting on what to share, um, I was reminded of what Allison shared in her message on Sunday, where it was Grief Sunday, and we were talking about grief and how grief and hope often commingle. Uh, they're often both present. Um, and even in our, our moments of greatest grief and despair, uh, that there can still be some hope worked into the situation. Um, and so I think that that was one of those little instances where arguably one of the most traumatic things you could ever witness at Alice even touched on that on Sunday, it would be very difficult to watch, especially uh, Jesus's followers um, to hear the words. It is finished probably rang as a negative. Um, however, the other passage I want to share comes from revelation and this comes from 21 starting in verse one and ending in verse seven. And I think this gets a little bit more of the tone that was probably in Jesus's head um, when he said those words from the cross. In Revelations, it says, 
Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the old heaven and the old earth had disappeared, and the sea was also gone, and I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven like a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. I heard a loud shout from the throne, saying, Look, God's home is now among his people. He will live with them, and they will be his people. God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes, and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. And the one sitting on the throne said, Look, I am making everything new. And then he said to me, Write this down, for what I tell you is trustworthy and true. And he also said, It is finished. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To all who are thirsty, I will give freely from the springs of the water of life. All who are victorious will inherit all these blessings, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. The same literal words. It is finished. The translation I'm reading from has an exclamation point at the end of both. So when Jesus said, it is finished, I believe he had this vision of what one day will be waiting for us, what will be the hope that we can, we can trust will one day happen for us, what might look like grief, what might look like pain, will one day see a wiping away of every tear from our eyes. There will be no more death or sorrow, crying or pain. We can have hope even in the midst of our greatest grief. It is finished. So I thank you for joining me today, and I hope you enjoy the rest of these reflections.